Good evening, good evening. Have you been cheering the NHS? Have you been celebrating the NHS? We'll just wait a few moments for a few people to come online. Who's our first person online? <laughs> Tracy! Yeah! This bass boss, Joy! Good to see you! Rachel! <laughs> Pippa! Good to see you, Pippa! You're number three, number four, I'm not sure. But you're towards the beginning. Uh, Wayne and Jan, Janet, and Becky. Becky, we were just clapping for you. Woo! Banging on our saucepans. Shouting out the window, tooting our horns for all our NHS workers. Karen, how are you diddling? Sue, hi. Anna, always good to see you, Anna. Charles. Hey. Day 17. Woo! Day 17. Anoop, good to see you, Anoop. Have you been working today, Anoop? I see you move. Mel, we're clapping for Mel and Anoop. Gifty, how are you? The Rock Church is now live. I've just got the text. <laughs> if you've got the text, guys, if it's come through as a warning on your phone, then let's share it. Rachel, you're always so quick at sharing. You're always the first to share. Sherry, good to see you. Not working today, Anoop, uh, but thanks for all your hard work that you're doing. Anoop uh, works for the NHS. Sherry's daughter works for the NHS. Sharon, great to see you. Let's just make sure, guys, that you can hear me okay and you can see me okay. Would you just please light up the page with some likes? and some hearts and some blue thumbs if you can hear me and if you can see me and everything's okay your side of things brilliant alan hi alan hi william share it on your page and like it have you got a cup of tea have you got your orange juice patricia the posh version of Pat. How are you doing? Carol, how are you? William, bosh, he's straight in there. Trusting the Lord for all things. Straight in there, William. We haven't even started and you're straight in. I like it. I like it. Amen. We get to 30 people now. Hey you, hey me, or hey someone else. Who's the you, Trace? Who you hey into? With a, with a cheesy face and a and kissy lips. I don't think it's me, is it? <laughs> Alan, Karen, Bill, bless you. How's your day been? How have you been? We're in day 17. 32 people online. We'll wait just a couple of more minutes. Just enough time to grab you a cup of tea or a drink. Oh, to, uh, to Pat. She's saying, hey, you, Tracy. Um, have you been outside applauding? It's Thursday night. All the um, frontline workers. That includes all the um, NHS. Um, Ola, good to see you. Um, all the food bankers. Uh, the... Fire department, police department, um, bus drivers, uh, shopkeepers, all these people that are out there um, helping the country still run as we were in this uh, lockdown. William said, I'm having this psalm, Psalm 17, that's for me. That's good, William, it is. God's been good and faithful, said Gifty. Amen. Hallelujah. Hiya, Diane. How are you? Good to see you. Brilliant, we're at 35 now. I had 35 in my head before we start. We're now at 36, so that's incredible. Karen, uh, pray every morning that God woke me 
and what beautiful weather it has. It's not been as sunny in Warsaw as it was yesterday, and, but praise God. Hey Donna, good to see you. Donna, I can't say your middle name, Rogers. Let's have a go. Donna, Lassie, Lassia. Um, Angela, hi, how are you? Uh, Tracy, have you just turned 40, Trace? Is it your birthday? I'm sure you're not that old, are you? You're a little bit younger than 40. William, he came to me in the night and spoke to me. No, I never, William. Stop spreading rumours. I didn't come to you, right? Uh, I've not gone to anybody's room at night. <laughs> Joy's 43. Well done, Joy. Um, happy birthday. Okay, shall we get ready? Shall, shall we get into the word? Good to see that you're doing well, Diane. And you're just good as well. Good to see that you're doing well. Well, Sharon, bless you, Pastor. Sharon Fletcher. That's a great surname. Have I ever told you that, Sharon? Sharon Fletcher. Sounds like a film star. Gemma, how you doing? Hi from Gemma, Chloe and Daniel. Well, hello, Chloe and hello, Daniel and hello, Gemma. Oh, Jesus came into your room last night. You see, you've got to be careful, William. Chico Mayo, like Chico Mayonnaise. This is our cameraman, Chico, great brother in Christ. Good to see you, Chico. Chico Mayo, Moyo. It's probably Moyo, isn't it? Moyo. Chico Moyo. Hallelujah. Well, we've done a bit of waffling and we've got to 39 people. Praise God. Well, tonight, guys, it's going to be a great night. I'd like to welcome you. If this is your first time of watching, my name is Ian. I am the uh, pastor uh, at the Rock Church here in the UK, United Kingdom, in the West Midlands. Uh, tonight, we are in chapter 17 of the book of Psalms. Uh, we understand and recognize that each psalm in the Word of God is a worship song. And this song that we're going to sing worship to, or, or we're going to see what David sang to, is Psalm 17. Uh, we have joined together as a church without walls for the last 17 nights. And we are in, unbelievable, in Psalm 17. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So guys, let's just get straight into the Word of God. And get yourself a pen. Look, I've got one of these fancy, uh, I don't know if you can see, it's probably upside down. I've got a fancy Rock Church, Rock Church pen. Uh, get yourself a pen, get yourself a Bible, get yourself the iPad, get yourself a cup of tea. Debbie, great to see you, right? Debbie Smith. And uh, we love you too, Gemma. Uh, Gemma's put to somebody, we love you. But I'm sure she loves everybody who's on here, amen. This is Church Without Wars. Grab your pen, let's get straight into it. Psalm 17, verse 1. Hear me, Lord, my plea is just listen to my cry. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Betty. And hi, Gordon. David's coming straight in again with a cry from his heart. And he's saying, hear me now. Hear my cry. Hear my prayer. And in verse 2. Oh, the, sorry. The rest of verse 1 it says, hear my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. David is saying that, God, I'm praying to you, but I know I am in good standing with you. I am praying to you, and I know I'm in the right place with you. And let me tell you this. You can pray to God when you're in the wrong place, and you can pray to God when you're in the right place. And when you're in the wrong place, God will still hear your prayer. But let me tell you that when you're in the right place, when you know that you are serving the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, you know that your life is in Christ, you know that you've taken up your cross and followed him. When you pray, when you're in Christ, right, it gives you so much more confidence. Amen. Good to see uh, Simon. Uh, how are you, Simon? This is the truth, guys, that we can pray when we're in disobedience. And we can tell anybody, doesn't matter how far you've walked away, you can pray, no matter how bad you think you are, no matter that, the fact that you don't think you're good enough, you can pray, hallelujah, to God, because he will listen. But let me tell you, when you pray, all right, with a bonus, when you pray with a, a confidence, 
good to see uh, Victor. When you pray with a boldness and a confidence, right, you are able to run into his presence because you know who you are in Christ and there's a boldness that comes over you. The way that you pray changes, the things that you say changes because you're no longer pleading for God to forgive you. You already know that you're forgiven. You already know you're in good standing with God. So you come straight in and do business with God. Amen. You start doing spiritual warfare. You start developing relationship. You start advancing forward in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And he says this, hear my prayer. It does not come from deceitful lips. My lips are holy, in other words. My lips are clean, in other words. Let me tell you that if you are at home today and you don't think your lips are clean, you know that you're not in the right place with God, well, tonight is your night because tonight you can come boldly into God's presence. Once you invite the Holy Ghost into your life, once you give your life and surrender to Jesus, you can come in boldly knowing that you are being forgiven right by the blood of jesus we are in easter week we are in easter week guys this is the week tomorrow right is when we celebrate that christ went to the cross tomorrow is good friday and for years and years and years i didn't understand what was good about good friday I didn't understand why we would call it Good Friday when really we should call it Bad Friday or we should call it Black Friday, just like they have on the sales. Right? We, we should call it a negative because we're, it represents Jesus dying on the cross. But the moment I understood that if it wasn't for the sacrifice of Jesus, then I couldn't be saved. If it wasn't for um, Friday, if Jesus hadn't died on the cross, if Jesus hadn't given his life to Jesus, uh, 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 given his life for me, then I couldn't know forgiveness and I couldn't know redemption and ultimately I couldn't know Jesus. So when you put that into perspective, you start to realize, in fact, it is good Friday because if it wasn't for this Friday, amen, it was the best thing that could ever happen to me. It's the best thing that could ever happen to you. Amen that Jesus took this negative situation. He died on a cross. He gave his life for me. He made my, he made my Friday, amen. We, we say thank Crunchy, it's Friday. We have a chocolate bar in the United Kingdom called Crunchy, Cadbury's Crunchy. And we say thank Crunchy, it's Friday. Saying, oh, that's a relief. We've got to the end of the week. Well, let me tell you, if it wasn't for, uh, uh, a good Friday, you and I wouldn't know the Father. And that's got nothing to do with Crunchy or nothing to do with Cadbury's. That's got to do with our heart and love of God that he would come and he would give his life for you. He would sacrifice his life for you. Amen. He would give you his everything. And that's why we celebrate Good Friday. Amen. Then he goes on and says in verse 2, Let my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Verse 3. Though you probe my heart. Good to see you, Lorna. Though you probe my heart. Though you examine me at night and test me. You will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Verse 4. Though people try to bribe me. I have kept myself from the ways of the violence. Though what through your through what your lips have commanded, my steps have held your paths. My feet have not stumbled. Verse six. I can tell. I can call on you, my God, for you answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Underline verse six. Underline verse six. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Amen. You can have a confidence tonight, guys, and a boldness tonight to know that you can call upon the name of Jesus. Because of what Jesus has done at Calvary, you can call upon his name. There's a confidence that when you, you know that when you talk to God, he listens. You know that when you pray, that he hears. Good to see Vanessa. 
The truth of the matter is that you can call out to God and there's a confidence in your heart. Amen. I know that I know that I know that I am saved. I am I, I'm, I'm confident that when I die or when the Lord returns, right, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Let me tell you this. There's so many conspiracy theories that are happening at the moment with um, COVID-19, the coronavirus. Some people say it's 5G towers and some people say it's this and it's that. And, and I don't know about you, right? Uh, you know, I don't know any answers of what's going on, but I know in my spirit that there's something just isn't right. Amen. And when I look at the word of God, you can see the word is very clear in the last days. And I'm telling you, church, I am not saying, you know, anything. But other than this, we are living in the last days. This is unprecedented what we're going through. This is unbelievable what we're going through. Good to see you, Rebecca. We are going, and Norbert, we are going through the last days. Okay, now I don't know how long it's going to be i'm not saying that you know the world's going to end and you know and all the rest of it but what i'm telling you what the bible talks about will happen in the last days you and i are living through at the moment amen <laughs> listen yeah you know i'm not saying that jesus is coming next week or the week after but i'm telling you church wake up look look at the plagues of locusts that was in kenya uh, and, and all over Africa uh, and the locusts, uh, I read it even uh, on the paper, said the, fi the fires that were in uh, America. Look at the floods that were all over the world and the floods that were in the UK. And now we're going through a plague of corona, of disease that is killing people and taking people's lives. I am telling you, we are living in the last days. Good to see you, Nick. We are living, guys. Wake up and see that the earth, creation is crying out that the gospel needs to be preached. I believe that the church is being sharpened and shapened. I believe that God's getting us ready, that we must advance the gospel. We must preach the gospel. We must shout out the gospel because it's not normal, okay? And it's, it's not... The normal thing for countries all over the world to be locked down. I am telling you guys, we are living in the last days. Jesus is returning and I can hear the sound of the trumpet. I can hear the sound of the horses. The, the, the Lord is returning. Amen. <laughs> I just, or I'm not saying anything else other than to see. The times that we're going through. Just see the situations that we're going through. It says there'd be wars and rumors of wars. There'd be earthquakes. There'd be plagues and there'd be disasters. Well, I don't know about you. All right? We are seeing. Uh, we are seeing this. And we are actually living through a plague. We're living through a disease. We're living through a pandemic. Amen? Now, God hasn't sent this corona. And God hasn't sent this pandemic but i'm telling you right this is what the word of god says will happen in the last days and i believe that even right even the unbelievers are seeing that there is something not right amen they're starting to see the spiritual warfare that was once in secret is now coming out in the open we talked a few chapters back about standing in the gap. Guys, as a church, we need to stand. As believers, we need to stand. We need to stand because it's not normal what we're going through at the moment. It's not natural. It's supernatural. And there's a supernatural battle that's going on. The devil is fighting. The devil is trying to claim souls for him. But hey, we stand in the gap. We take the, the sword um, of the word of God. Amen. The shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the, the, the shoes uh, of peace. Uh, and we start to fight. 
right? And we start to declare and we start to say that the devil will not have victory over you and over me. The devil will not have victory over his church. The devil will not have victory over this town, this region, this nation or the nations. We stand in the gap and we speak life where there is death. We speak hope in hopeless situations. We speak healing in, in, in situations that are, that are sick, where people are sick, and we speak the word of God. We are living in the last days. Vera, great to see you, Vera. So Vera, we put a video. Um, has anybody yet seen the video I put out about two hours ago um, of uh, Vera, who's just joined us? I put a video out um, of Vera at the manor worshiping. So uh, I don't know if you saw that. If you did see it, just, just send me a message. So I know you've seen it. Um, and uh, I think we're going to make Vera famous. <laughs> so I hope you've seen it, Vera. Uh, and uh, it's such, such an encouragement to people already. We are living in the last days. We need to stand on the word. We need to declare hope. And we need to declare joy and peace. We need to declare that Jesus is the answer. He is the answer. He is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Amen. Hallelujah. So he goes on here. And in verse, um, in verse 3, it says, Though you probe my heart, though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people try to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. And then in verse 6 it says, I call on you, my God, for you will answer. Be bold tonight. Be confident tonight because of the blood of Jesus. You can call upon the name of the Lord and he will answer. He will answer. Amen. In verse, the rest of verse 6, turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love. You who saved by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Show me, in verse 7, the wonders of your great love. I don't know if you would agree. And, um, and, and if you would agree, right, you can put yes in the comments. And if you agree to this and you declare that this is true, all right, would you agree that God has done wonders in your life and my life. Would you agree, right, that you've seen the wonder-working God in your life? If yes, you've seen God do wonders, yes, you've seen the God of wonder and the God of might, if you can say, yes, he, he's done something in my life that was, was supernatural, then I want you to put yes. Because we're having people watch this showing here and these videos and saying, ah, how can you believe in God? That's ridiculous. Well, I'm telling you, my testimony is, yes, I have seen the wonder working God. Yes, I have. Right. But I want people to also see it's not just me who's seen the wonder miracle working God. I want them to see that Tracy's seen and Sherry's seen and Pippa's seen and Anne's seen and Sue has seen the wonder of God. I want people to be able to say, listen, hey, hey, it's okay for you, but you know, you, you're bound to have seen because you know, you're, you're the pastor and you're crazy. I want them to see that Ulla and Sharon and Sherry and Lorna has seen the wonder of God. So when man says you must be crazy, I would say, yeah, I am a bit crazy, but so is Gemma, so is Clive, so is Vera, amen. I can't even say this name, Vish, Vishula. I'm sorry I haven't said that properly. I want to say it's not just me. Vanessa has seen the wonder of God. Angela has seen the wonder of God. Steve has seen the wonder of God. Charles has seen the wonder of God. David has seen. Debbie has seen. Rachel has seen. So if you think I'm crazy, then we're all crazy. The whole 53 of us watching, the old 400 of us that are watching online right now, William has seen the wonder of God and so is joy. Amen. It's so important that the world hears that it's not just one voice in the desert saying, look at the wonders of God, but it's the church rising up. Helen has seen the wonder of God. Amen. God is so good. Betty and Gordon 
can say yes and Josephine can say yes they've seen the wonder of God hallelujah it says this to me it says this in verse 7 show me the wonders of your great love you have you who saved by your right hand those who take refuge from their foes again Keith and Alan God's coming David's coming back to refuge this psalm this book is all about prayer David's just been talking about prayer listen David what was he he was a shepherd right he was a shepherd and uh, he had that gift in he was a uh, fighter and a warrior and he took down Goliath and he had that gift in and then he was a king so David was had three three parts of his life shepherd warrior and king but this here this scripture that we're talking about tonight and um, it's talking about David as a man of God it's not we're not talking about David the king here we're not talking about David the shepherd we're not talking about David the warrior we're talking about David the man of God who can say my lips are clean and I can come boldly into your presence because I know that I know that I know that I know that you are alive Amen. Let's not talk about Ian the pastor or talking about uh, uh, um, Norbert the worship leader or Victor the, the, the preacher or sound guy or, or whatever it may be. We're not talking about gifting tonight. What we are talking about, we're talking about Suku, the woman of God. We're talking about William, the man of God. We're talking about Angela, the woman of God. Amen. We're talking about uh, Betty, the woman of God. Hello, hallelujah, Steve, the man of God. We're talking right now about you as an individual. And David as an individual said, I can come boldly into his presence because I know my God and I know what he's done for me. Can you say boldly in your heart that I know Jesus? I know what he's done for me. We are celebrating Easter this weekend, but I don't need Easter for me to remember Calvary and the cross and the victory of Jesus. I wake up every day as if it's Resurrection Sunday. I wake up every day that I know that he is alive. I am telling you, right, not you in your gifting or in your ministry, but you as a man and a woman of God. Can you as a man and a woman of God boldly come into his presence because you're covered in the blood of Jesus? Boldly come into his presence because you've got fresh revelation that you, you, the word of God is, is, is renewed your mind, that you hide behind the word that you're now protected because he's your refuge and David comes back again to a refuge he's always saying in nearly all of these Psalms that we've read and we're now in Psalm 17 he always comes back to God being a refuge God being a refuge and what's a refuge it's a hiding place what's a refuge it's a security good to see you Neil the refuge is it's in him that you hide and have your being and have your protection hallelujah it's in him <laughs> it's in God amen He's your refuge. And David's saying, he's my refuge. I pray to him because I'm confident that he is. He's a good, 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 good father. Amen. He runs after me. He chases me. His love abounds me. His joy fills me. I'm just madly in love with God. And that's what makes David here a, a, a man of prayer and a man of worship. David is a man of prayer and worship, not because of his title as king, not because of his title as shepherd, not because of his title as warrior. What makes David confident is his relationship with God. What will make you confident isn't your bank balance, isn't your ministry or job title, isn't the car that you drive, isn't the holidays you go on, isn't the Facebook stroke fake book pictures that you put on <laughs> what makes you confident right is your relationship with the lord jesus christ what makes you confident is the bonus you have knowing that every word in this bible is written for you to instruct you to change you to transform you and to turn you more into christ what makes you bold is knowing that he has anointed you for such a time as this hallelujah now have a look at this in verse 7 and this will bless your heart in verse 7 it says show me the wonders of your great love sorry in verse 8 in verse 8 
It says, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who are out there to destroy me, from the mortar enemies who surround me. Now, underline this, guys, and this is going to bless you. Right? Verse 8. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Underline apple, underline eye. Let me just prophesy to you tonight and just declare to you tonight, and you've maybe never heard this before. I am telling you tonight that you are the apple of God's eye. The apple of God's eye. Keep me, David said, keep me. He knew he was the apple of God's eye. He said, keep me as the apple of your eye. The apple is the very center part, the, the, the most precious part of the eye, uh, the, the, the lens, the very center. Therefore, you can get away with uh, 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 damage to the outside of the eye, uh, to the white of the eye, but the center of the eye, that's the most precious part. And he's saying, keep me as the most precious part. Keep me as the most sensitive, precious part. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hallelujah. Just let that sink in for a moment. God is saying that you are the apple of his eye. Amen. Just receive that now. Just, just receive that. God is telling you, Karen, Suku, Victor, Nick, Lorna. He's telling you that you are the center, the apple of his eye. You are so precious to him. Amen. Imagine that. His love for you is without bounds, without limits. Look, we're coming up to we're, we're, we're coming up to Easter weekend. That shows you how much God loves you. That Jesus, even when we were in our sin, came and gave everything. Amen. This is the verse that I highlighted today when reading the Psalms, said Sharon. Amen. Wow. You're the apple. You're the apple. And you're the apple of his eye. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. The shadow of his wings. Uh, you can imagine uh, David. Um, he's writing this worship song in a hot nation in a hot country the sun is hard if you live in a country if you live in Africa if you live in India if you live in these kind of countries when the sun comes down right there's two things that you cry out for the first thing is shade and the second thing is water and David said keep me hide me in the shadow of your wings can you imagine in a hot country and you're walking and you have no shade, but then you see a tree. And so you stand under the tree just to catch your breath. Good to see you, Regan. Just to catch your breath. God is saying, when the sun is beating down, I will put my wings out to you and you can hide under my wings. You're the apple of my eye. And David said, I want to hide in the shadow of your wings tonight as things are hotting up as we're in day 17 of lockdown as we're watching the news and it seems to be getting worse as we're watching the news and we realize that 21 days of lockdown that finishes on monday is not going to finish on monday we realize that we're going to be locked down for longer than we expected we're going to be locked down for longer than we were told we don't know what's happening as things heat up, as the temperature heats up, as, as, as stress levels heat up, as sort of uncertainty heats up, you can hide under the shadow of God's peace. You can hide underneath the wings of his joy. You can take refuge in our God and King. Whether they lock us down for 21 days, 41 days, 61 days, 81 days, I know and I am confident that my God is for me. 
that I can pray to him and he will answer. And that's what the word of God says. Be confident tonight that no matter how long we're in lockdown, no matter if things get hotter, that we can be in the shadow of his wings. Why? Because you're the apple of his eye. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Verse 10 says, They close up their uh, hearts and their mouths speak with arrogance. They have tackled me down. They now surround me. David's now talking about, um, he's just mentioned about how he has good in his mouth and he speaks life from his mouth. He's just talked about how his heart is clean. He's talked about how he can come boldly to God. Now he's explaining the hearts of the unbelievers. He's saying that they have wicked in their heart. It says their mouths speak with arrogance and it says they are chasing me. They're not just giving me a hard time here. They're chasing me down. And I don't know about you. It seems to be at times where you can be going in life. One, thing's, one thing goes wrong or you have one challenge in life. But it's never just one. right? A second thing then comes and a third thing comes and a fourth thing comes. And sometimes you can have so much pressure and so many things coming from different avenues that you feel like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You can have so much going on that you go, well, what's happening? And David's saying here, it's almost like these people, these people are chasing me. They're not just, they're not just making trouble for me when I walk past. They're actually hunting me down and chasing. And I don't know about you, but sometimes trouble, uh, situations, craziness can just come after you. And you're thinking, where's that come from? You're thinking, I don't understand. Or maybe you go, I understand, I've got a little bit of aggro from this situation here, but I thought that was all sorted, but now this is coming from here, that's coming from here, that's coming from here, and I feel like I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. He then says in verse 12, they are like a hungry, they are like a lion hungry for prey, like a fierce lion crouching in cover, sometimes trouble, it's it's crouching down and it's ready to jump on you and let me tell you this coronavirus has jumped on everyone this lockdown of the nation has jumped on everyone everyone's been jumped on by this lion that's been prowling this disease that's been hiding it's jumped on everyone right and it's come out of nowhere and nobody expected it and now everybody it's like the lions come but let me tell you this right the lion can devour you right but what you need to do is refuse to be devoured by the lion refuse for the fear to enter your heart refuse for the anguish to take over you refuse for the doubt and unbelief that you where, where is God in this where is he in this when you start to speak boldly like David and say even though the enemy is 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 crouching like a hungry lion like as if I'm its prey God I'm trusting in you he says in verse 13 rise up Lord confront them bring them down with your sword rescue me from the wicked by your hand save me from such Lord for those of this world whose reward is in this life, may what you have stored up for the wicked fill their bellies. May their children gorge themselves on it. May there be leftovers for their little ones. David's coming here now and he's saying, my goodness, God, if they're messing with me, they're messing with you. My God, if their God go down, make so much trouble for them that not only their children right, will, will receive trouble because of what their fathers have done, the children's children will receive trouble. Let me tell you this, when the devil is, is, is trying to take you into depression, when the devil is trying to put sickness on you, when the devil is trying to destroy your marriage, when the devil is trying to destroy uh, your future, right, don't just say a nice, nice prayer to God. Do spiritual warfare. When the devil tries to take you out, don't try and deal with the devil like an Englishman and politely try and deal with him. Come against him, right? Come against him. Use the, it says here, Lord, use your sword. Well, what's the sword? The sword is the word of God. Just cut off the lie of the devil. 
just in your in your prayer time just come against the devil and say devil you know don't be polite to the devil tell him who he is you, you, you've heard that saying when the devil reminds you of your past all your failings of all the things you've done wrong. And he says to you, come on Ian, you're never going to do it because you failed again and you failed before and you always fail. And he reminds you of all your past failures to belittle you and to weaken you. And you've heard the saying, when the devil reminds you of your past, remind the devil of his future. <laughs> Amen. You see, the Lord is returning, as we said. God is returning. And when the devil tries to tell you you're good for nothing and you're nobody, I'm telling you, don't be polite with the devil. Take up the word of God. Take the sword of God and deal with, deal with the devil. Okay, don't, don't, don't mess around with him. Amen. Just tell him. Tell him that he's nothing. Tell him that he's nobody. Tell him he has no grip on you. Tell him that you rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus that's higher than any other name. Bind him up. Cast him out. Get rid of him. Tell him to take his filthy hands of your marriage, of your life, of your situation. Come against him with the word of God and battle with him. And when he tries to put words and thoughts in your mind, the apostle Paul says, hold him captive. Have that battle that's going on in the mind and say, no. I choose not to believe that because that's not true. I feel like that. I, it feels true. I feel lonely. I feel victimized. I feel helpless. But the word of God says I am more than a conqueror. The word of God says I am an overcomer. The word of God says that if God is for me, who can be against me? So therefore, devil, when you try to make me feel nothing and nobody, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I am an overcomer. I have authority. I am able to speak life and death. And I speak death to your lies right now. I rebuke you, Satan, in my life. Amen. And you start to, to as David did here, God, deal with them. Strike down the father, strike down, uh, strike down the father, strike down the father's son, strike down even the, the son of the son. God, just go and deal with them. And he says then in verse 15, as for me, deal with the devil, devil, bosh, 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 deal with the devil spiritually, use your heavenly tongue, use the word of God, warfare in your mind, hold captive every thought, right? Decide whether it's good for you or not good for you. Cast it out if it's not good for you. Process it if it's good for you. Deal with it and then say, right, after you've kicked the devil's butt, you can then say, ha, well, as for me, in case you were wondering, right, I will be vindicated and I will see your face. Amen. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. Listen, David is saying here, because I trust you, God, because I know that you listen to me. I know my lips are clean. I know that I'm in right standing in relationship with you. I know that even though the devil is after me and enemies come and prowl after me, I know God, you would deal. You would fight the battle. You, I don't need to give him a piece of my mind. I don't need to tell him what I think. I don't need to give him my opinion. I trust you. I give it to you. You, you deal with them, right? And then we do spiritual warfare. And when God has won the battle, I would then declare, well, and as for me, the end of the chapter, the end of this battle, the end of the story, I'm going to commentate my own life and say, as for me, I will be vindicated and I will see your face. See your face means I will have intimacy with you. I will be in your presence. I will know your joy. I will know your love. After the devil has tried to kick my butt, after the devil has chased after me, after all this stuff's happened, I will see your face. I will know your presence. I will be content in your anointing because you, God, you are good to me. When I awake, I will be satisfied seeing your likeness. I know that when I get through this COVID-19, I know when I get through this, this, this lockdown, I know I will see God's power in my life. I know I will become more like Jesus. I know that he's growing me. I know that he's increasing me. I know that he's changing me. So whatever the devil means for evil right now, I capture it and I take it for good because I know right, that God is taking me through this valley of the shadow of death and I will be changed and I will be transformed. So God, 
kick the devil's butt. God, I'm praying to you, sort out this, this coronavirus. Let's get things back to normal. But in, in, the, in, the, in between of, then and, of now and then, right, I am going to grow in you and I will see your face and I will see your likeness. I will look at myself in the mirror and I will see that I'm more like you than I ever was before we went into lockdown. Boom. That's what the word of God is for you tonight. Amen. That's what the word of God is for you and I tonight. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Listen, guys, I want to say a prayer now. For all those people that are watching this tonight and haven't got victory over their life, let, let me tell you this, I've, I've, got, I've got depression coming in. Uh, they need to know Jesus. If you need to know Jesus Christ tonight, he will come and he will boom into your life. He will come and do something amazing in your life. And so therefore, guys, if you want to know Jesus, I want to pray for you right now. I'm going to say a prayer and it's going to be an introduction right, of you knowing Jesus. Repeat this prayer after me as we invite Jesus into our life. Dean, good to see you. This is the best part, Dean. This is where we're going to see people give their lives to Jesus. And it's always exciting when people give their life to Jesus. Just repeat this after me. Father God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to this earth. Jesus, I thank you for coming, giving your life, dying on the cross, and, and dying for my sin. Jesus, I recognize that you took my punishment, my penalty. You died for my sin and my wrongdoing, my arrogance and stubbornness. I've always lived my life for me. But today, I choose to live my life for you. Forgive me of my sin. I'm sorry for my wrongdoing. Today, would you make your home in my heart? Today, I invite you into my life. I choose to live for you today and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. And the word amen, guys, means I agree. Listen, when people give their lives to the Lord, we just like to join in. Uh, the Bible says the angels rejoice. And, and as the, um, the Church Without Wars online, we like to join in. And we just like to just press loads of like buttons and share buttons. And we do a, a virtual cheer as we celebrate, amen, as we celebrate all those that have given their life to Jesus. The word of God says, there's a book in heaven called the Lamb's Book of Life and your name is now written in that book. Journey with us over the rest of this lockdown period. Um, journey with us, growing God, growing your relationship. Invite the Holy Spirit into your life. And uh, we will spend time talking about being baptized with the Holy Spirit and explain what that means. God, we give you gifts and we give you new tongues. Amen. But he's a good, good God. Hallelujah. Well, just as we come into the end uh, and, and we come to completion, I want to let you know that tomorrow at 11 a.m., tomorrow at 11 a.m. in the morning, we are going to have a live service. We're going to have a Good Friday service online. Hallelujah. Right, and we are gonna have a virtual walk of the cross. Let me explain. Um, every Good Friday, uh, the church is joined together, and we have a we have a Good Friday walk through the town, a reenactment of the crucifixion of Christ. And there's some actors that that dress up as the Roman the, uh, 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 the Roman uh, officers and and Jesus, and we go through the town. And, um, and we sing uh, Jesus Remember Me and we do the Stations of the Cross and then we end up in the, in the center of the town and we have a service. Of course, because of lockdown, 
we're not able to do that. But what we do have, right, is video of all like little phone videos that we've taken over the years, right, of this experience um, in the town. And then we've had um, some of the local ministers get together. And what they've done is that, that we put a video together, which actually is the march, is the, is the way of the cross. So tomorrow morning, we're going to broadcast live from the Rock Church at 11 a.m. And we're going to have, we're going to show the video. We're going to have worship and we're going to have the word of God. So for one hour tomorrow from 11.30, uh, it's from 11 um, to um from 11 to 12, uh, we are going to have um, a Good Friday service. And I want you to gather all your family together um, and the children, and we're joined together to celebrate what Christ did 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. So if you are excited about that, would you just, um, would you just press the like buttons on there? Let's get some support, right? Some encouragement. If you are able to make it, just light that up um, at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. We shall meet together. We shall be live from the Rock Church and we shall broadcast uh, a, a Good Friday service. How exciting is that? Amen. I want you to invite your friends. Um, we will have a text that we can send out and we'll put something on, on the, um, the Facebook. Um, Nick is putting together um, a flyer that after this um, gathering I will put that on tonight on Facebook that you can like and share so that's tomorrow good Friday um, at 11 a.m. amen and it'll be amazing and also on Sunday we're gonna have a resurrection service at 10 30 a.m. will also be live and for you guys to join in Amen. A couple of other things is um, a couple of hours ago, uh, we um, put the video of uh, uh, Vera. Uh, are you still online, Vera? Just just give me a, uh, just just write, I'm still here if you're on there. Um, Vera, the nurse that we've, uh, it's become our, our friend, our sister in Christ, uh, who was worshiping at the Manor Hospital. Uh, and we put that video uh, with Vera's permission on Facebook a couple of hours ago and so I'd like you to go onto the Facebook page after we finish here tonight watch that video it will really encourage you it will really bless you and share that video out so even though the church doors are open this Easter we're still very very busy with what we're doing and we're going to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're going to celebrate Hosanna in the highest. We're going to celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to lift our voices up and we lift our prayers up. Because if it wasn't for Calvary, if it wasn't for Easter, if it wasn't for this time that we're in at the moment, I tell you, you and I wouldn't know the Father. You see, God said from the beginning that we were the apple of his eye. But unfortunately, we couldn't know God because our lips, they were unclean. Amen. Where David said, my lips are clean. And so how could our lips be cleansed? Blood of Jesus. How could we become made holy? The blood of Jesus. How can we come into the presence of God? The God who's saying, you're the apple of my eye, but we can't hear him and we can't see him. How could we hear him? How could we see him through the blood of Jesus? And because God made a way where there seemed to be no way, you and I can boldly come to his presence. So if we can gather tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, that's our way of saying to God, thank you for Calvary. Thank you for what you did on the cross. As we join the Church Without Walls, right, as we celebrate what Christ did 2,000 years ago on the place of the school, Golgotha, as he hung on the cross for you and I, we have victory because of the name of Jesus. He's an incredible God. Amen. Well, listen, guys, I'm, I'm going to just leave the worship um, going for a couple of minutes. Please um, say hi to one another. Uh, connect with one another. Uh, I'm so blessed. Vera, you're still there. Great to see you. Uh, I'm so blessed that we can gather together. I don't know how much longer we're going to be in lockdown, but I think we should carry on. 
Amen. I think that we're building um, a church online. Uh, we're building fellowship and God's building us through his spirit. So I just want to pray right now, Father, I pray a favor and a blessing upon every person under the sound of my voice. May Psalm 91 cover them. May you protect them. Lord, may they know the shadow of your wing. May they know you as the cleft of the rock and the hiding place. May they know you as their protector and their deliverer and their healer. Father, I pray right now that God, no weapon formed against will prosper. We pray for the safety of every NHS worker. We, we pray right now, Lord Father, as those who are on the front line, protect them. But God, we also pray that they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. So Father, make your people strong. Bless your people. Bless your children, Lord Father. May we have confidence in our heart, a boldness in our heart. May our minds be renewed and may our mouths be as bold and free to talk and testify of who you are. Amen. Um, one thing I think is really good is that as believers, we are stepping up and becoming vocal. Um, Vera, the... The thing that blessed me so much when I saw you um, worshipping um, in your workplace, you know, uh, in, in all your protective gear at, at the Manor Hospital, I just love the fact, Vera, that there was a bonus in you. That as a nurse on the front line, you, they, there are things to be worried about. There are things to be scared about. You know, you're dealing with stuff that, that you, we don't know what we're dealing with and you're on that front line. But what blessed me so much and why I asked you for the video and shared it was because there was a boldness in you, that you had a resilience in you that said, well, I, I'm worshiping God no matter where I am, no matter what challenge there is. And that was a boldness in you that I believe as a church, and um, when I say the church, I don't just mean the rock church, I mean the, the worldwide church is starting to get a resilience and boldness, amen, to know that, hey, God is greater than any, than any disease, than any sickness, than any poverty, than any situation. God is greater. And so I commend you and I celebrate the fact that you are you. And God's created you and you're the apple of God's eye. And when I saw that video, I could see very clearly, right? I can see why Vera is the apple of God's eye. She's cracking. She's brilliant. And I want God to say that about me. And I want God to say that about every one of us here, that our lifestyle represents the fact that we're in love with Jesus and he's in love with us and that we're the apple of his eye and we know it. Amen. Uh, you're the apple of God's eye. Do you know it, right? <laughs> Do you know it, right? And, um, you know, I, I think that's exciting. So so all those theories out there, right? Uh, uh, you know, all of you guys that are having a supernatural bonus rise up in your heart, that's the Holy Ghost. Run with it. Go for it in the mighty name of Jesus. 11 o'clock tomorrow, you and I are going to meet together with our children, with our family, and we're gonna have a good Friday service. Good, because without that Friday, you and I wouldn't know the resurrected Lord. Amen. Good, because he was willing to take our price, our penalty, our suffering. Good, because if Jesus hadn't done it, you and I wouldn't be able to speak so boldly and so free, freely now. So have an incredible night. Have a blessed night. I will leave uh, worship playing, uh, uh, you know, in the background, talk to one another and um, have an incredible evening. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Good night. We love you guys. And, and uh, as the Rock Church, we just pray the very best on you. As the leadership of the Rock, we want the very best for you. And we want to see you prosper and increase uh, through this moment and season um, of depression, um, of the nation, of the finances, the depression of the people that we will not be depressed because our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Amen.